There was a very interesting exchange today on LBC with James O'Brien and a person called Stuart in Finchley. Now, Stuart in Finchley was a, I, I presume, senior civil servant working at number 10, and he called LBC, he called James O'Brien, uh, on the eve of Boris's resignation. He called him before Rishi Sunak himself resigned. And he was concerned um, about the trashing of the letter from Simon MacDonald, the senior civil servant, by Dominic Raab, the then Deputy Prime Minister. And he was concerned that the civil service was being used to facilitate corruption. And that ambiguous language, particularly about Chris Pincher, uh, untruths um, were being perpetuated uh, with the connivance of an independent civil servant, or, or uh, with the connivance of an independent civil service. Now, um, this man, Stuart, in Finchley, was forced. Uh, he was he was um, later uh, suspended and then forced to resign, sacked, for calling James O'Brien and pointing out that there was something deeply wrong. He was a whistleblower, sacked, essentially, for calling out foul play. He talks today about a corrupt state and talks about uh, his hoping that this was a turning point, which it was not. He says there's a Harvey scandal, shows... Uh, the turning point had not come that six months down the line nothing has changed and that uh, the current government is as corrupt and the civil service that is supporting it is as complicit as it was when he initially called the programme. And he sounded deeply emotional as he spoke to James O'Brien. Now, something that I think hasn't um, has, hasn't entirely gone through uh, his mind, or maybe it has, but it wasn't something he expressed, it's something that suddenly struck me. And it struck me very forcibly, because I'm not a great fan of Dominic Raab. I think Dominic Raab... Um, I, I, I will always remember Dominic Raab as the person who was sunning himself on the beach in Crete when he should have been uh, getting up and helping those many Afghans who put their lives on the line for us while we were fighting the Taliban in Afghanistan. And he didn't. He continued selling himself in Crete because, uh, why, some sort of arrogance. Anyway, the, almost within days of Rishi Sunak's um, movement into number 10 Downing Street, there was a scandal. And that scandal was about uh, Dominic Raab bullying. And it was, all it was all placed on the back burner. It was all placed on the back burner uh, to be investigated by barrister Adam Tolley. Deny, uh, um, Rob denies any wrongdoing, but have we heard anything th anything further about this six, year, six months down the line? No, we haven't. Is it six months? I don't know. It feels like six months anyway. And Sunak, Su Sunak has not been um, exempt from all the... Uh, scandal and sort of corruption there. His wife's non-domicile tax, uh, uh, tax status, uh, the birthday gathering, the cake for Johnson, and now his failure to wear a seatbelt. So a prime minister who has twice been served fixed penalty notices. And he thinks it's OK simply to order another investigation into... Um, the affairs of his chairman, Nadim Zahawi, who has admitted that he failed to pay the right amount of tax and who himself is a former chancellor. I, I simply find it extraordinary. And at the same time, we have another scandal brewing um, that Boris Johnson will be in front of the parliamentary standards watchdog, um, not only... Uh, to discuss the Partygate stuff, but also to discuss the personal loan of 800000 which the BBC chairman, Richard Sharp, had engineered, had recommended 
um, and uh, uh, at the same time that he himself is being recommended for the role of BBC chairman. The problem is um, Mr Sunak cannot claim to be raising standards, even if he's got a new ethics advisor, he cannot claim to be raising standards is, is, uh, if all he's doing is putting things onto the back burner. Why have we not heard about a resolution of this Dominic Raab bullying scandal? Is it because it's not important? Is it because it's simply been put to the long grass? And it was something... It, it was that thought which struck me so strongly while I was listening to uh, the James O'Brien show and listening to this man, Stuart, getting more and more emotional about his concerns over corruption and over what he describes as a failed state. I don't think the UK is yet a failed state. I do think that it is a state which is condoning misconduct in high office. And I also think that although Rishi Sunak is proving to be inept, he is simply taking his cue from the people who taught him. And I think it's going to be, it's going to take a long time, it's going to be very difficult for any Prime Minister to change the tone of politics. This is why I don't think it's simply a matter of a general election. It's a matter of a complete reboot of our political life. I don't know how that's going to happen. But I think we have, we, we have queered the pitch. We need to get the steamroller out and to re-roll uh, the, the playing fields of Eton, effectively. Uh, when we look across to a country which is supposedly deeply admired in corruption, we see Ukraine, we see ministers in Ukraine resigning by the dozen simply for the suspicion of corruption. Simply because they, simply because they have made a mistake, this is the honourable thing to do. So why, why is Nadim Zahawi hanging on? Why does he not realise that the longer he hangs on, the more damage he does not only to the Conservative Party, not only to the Prime Minister, but to our government and to our country? This is the problem. The wider picture is the problem. He is destroying our reputation.